thousands of missionaries, young men and women, and senior couples come here every year to prepare for service somewhere in the world. The decision to do this is easier for some than others. When it comes to leaving family and friends, it's always emotional. This is the hard part. Every Wednesday, families and friends say farewell to young Latter-day Saint men and women, volunteering 18 months to two years to preach, teach, and serve somewhere in the world. It's very exciting, but it's hard to but it's mostly exciting. I have to admit, it's mostly exciting. Missionaries greet the three to 400 new arrivals. 100 cars unload every 15 minutes. 20,000 new missionaries pass through these doors every year. For 50 years, they have come here to learn how to teach the basic principles of their faith. Before I got my call, you know, I never knew they sent missionaries to Madagascar and suddenly everybody, everybody knew somebody that's been there. First photos for ID badges, then seam rippers to open the pockets of new suits, a place for those internationally recognized name tags. Next, the host missionary takes the new missionary to his or her room. Two bunk beds, four to a room. After a quick look around, then an important meeting. The companion. They are together anywhere from three to 12 weeks in preparation for working in pairs in their assigned countries. Jesus Christos делал то, что отец заповедовал им. 52 languages are taught here. They spend nine hours a day in classes. Most of the instructors are former missionaries, and for in-depth study, there is the language lab. Você poderia ler esta passagem em voz alta? The dining hall, in two-hour blocks, three times a day, 500 hungry young people arrive every half hour, and it's all you can eat. Last year, they consumed more than 200,000 apples, more than 163,000 pounds of bananas, more than 25,000 gallons of 2% milk, with chocolate milk close behind at more than 22,000. And they ate more cereal than anyone cares to count or weigh. In order to burn off some of those calories, the young missionaries have an opportunity to come here to one of the busiest gyms in America. They exercise 60 minutes a day. Last year, instructors logged half a million missionary hours. They even have early morning options for the young women. There's a 6 a.m. class from to 6.30 that the sisters are um, allowed to go to, and they have Pilates and yoga and kickboxing and a step class. The clean cut concept starts at the MTC barber shop. I'm glad to get it off. It's my first haircut, the MTC. So, it's my first haircut by someone outside of my family. And keeping their clothes clean takes up some of their day off. Today it's our it's our P day, which is preparation day. Uh, we do laundry. We write letters home. And at the mailboxes, they look for letters in return. We even get excited for each other when we get mail, so it's really awesome. What happens here remains one of the most unique religious programs in the world. More than 52,000 missionaries are living in more than 120 nations where they share their faith and service. For most, it begins here on a 40-acre campus known simply as the MTC. Carol, that was so interesting. Did you have full access to the entire MTC building? I have had. They've been very gracious to us to let us basically follow these young men and women all around. Because I don't think most people have ever seen the inside unless you've served a mission or I taken a missionary so. down. And even then, you know, it keeps changing. And so uh, that's the interesting part of this story, I think, is that new programs, language programs developing and options to train and, and even exercise programs are different than they used to be. So where did missionaries go before the MTC in Provo? Well, I'm, I'm using a little cheat sheet here uh, called the Salt Lake Missionary Home. That was about 1924 when that was actually set up. The Missionary Language Institute at BYU, literally on Campus 61. And then 1963, the Language Training Mission. And in 1974, 
more groundbreaking for the 40 acre campus that is now close to BYU that we're familiar with. You talked about the emotion uh, having dropped off a missionary not too long ago. I'm glad they changed that and that you drop off and don't have to go in anymore. I think that was would have been too dramatic for me. Has that been a good thing for the MTC to change that? The MTC leaders, presidency uh, members say that the mothers particularly appreciate not having to go inside, watch a program, listen to a speaker, and then say goodbye to their son or daughter. That dropping off at the curb is much less, shall we say, traumatic? Oh, absolutely. I was not looking forward to that. <laughs> I was really dreading that.